Princess Quest is a narrative masterpiece, and today I aim to show you why. With the innocence of the glowing glossed princess, contrasting the giant overwhelming glitchy mess surrounding her, the themes and ideas that these minigames present connect incredibly well with the previous games and tell the story of a character that has been so long overdue. My name is Ozone, and welcome to the story of a forgotten hero's revenge. If you aren't aware, Princess Quest 1, 2, and 3 are all arcade machines that you can find in Security Breach. If you complete all of them, you get the savior ending in which Vanessa and the staff bots are freed from Glitch Trap's control. It's the best ending in the game, with the three main characters surviving and the Mimic 1 virus neutralized. But more on that later. While this is a huge minigame in Security Breach with massive implications, it actually wasn't the first time we saw it. The first time was in the mobile port for FNAF VR Help Wanted. It turns out that one of the messages in Security Breach says that in-universe, Princess Quest was also ported from an old mobile game to a stand-up arcade. So what is the game about? You begin in a castle bedroom, the moonlight from the windows pierced into the room engulfed in darkness. Alone, a princess and her lantern, connected by a yellow glow. She's just awoken from a deep sleep. Where was she? She wasn't a princess, or <laughs> at least she didn't think she was. No, she was put into this game. She was put into this environment. She needs to escape. Now, hang on for a second, because yes, this is more of my narrative rather than a proper theory on what's happening. But to help to understand, I'm sort of thinking of what happened in WandaVision when modern day technology entered the hex and became the equivalent of that from the past. It's adapting to the environment that it is in, and now this character is the princess in an old Princess Quest arcade game. This allows for a lot of parallelism and greater storytelling without breaking away from the themes of the game. The princess looks around, coming across some glitchy monsters and lighting her path along the way, but she doesn't even realise that she is trapped. It's a labyrinth with no exit, a maze with no prize, and she comes across something that tells her exactly where she is. It tells her what she truly is. She's dead. She's a ghost, carrying her soul in her lantern. In the Phasma Fright story coming home, Susie tries to communicate with her family, but doesn't realise that she is a spirit. And for Susie, the way she discovers this is through a conversation with her distraught mother and her mother's friend. For the princess, she comes across a gravestone with her own name on it. But hang on for one second, we've seen this gravestone before. For one, we've seen this whole location in the Lawkeeper ending of Pizzeria Simulator. Six gravestones, five in the front, and one by a tree in the back. And in Princess Quest, that one is already lit. That's because this soul is present. This soul belongs to the princess. But we've also seen this gravestone in the survival logbook. Mike draws one in his red ink, and there's faded text reading my name. Complete the word search puzzle, and you discover that this name is Cassidy, and the soul is possessing Golden Freddy. Perhaps that's why the princess was named Cassidy in the game files, and why she has her golden glow. She finds a key, uses it on the large central door, and walks out into a room filled with an amalgamation of the glitchy entities that now make up a huge rabbit monster. It speaks in strange symbols that can be translated to, I always come back. And in the files there's text that says, it's me. This is Golden Freddy versus Springtrap, Cassidy fighting Afton. But it wasn't enough. In seconds, the conglomerate engulfs the princess, and she blacks out, unable to see or to hear, but still able to think. This is absolutely Cassidy's quest, which is ironic because it is said that Princess Quest is a working title, you could say that the game is still under construction. 
In a Tales from the Peterplex story with the same name, a girl is trapped in a simulation and sees some weird things like babies with no faces and teenagers made of a jelly substance. Eventually all of them combine into a huge jelly entity and she gets overwhelmed by it until she can no longer sense any surroundings, but can still breathe. And while we all thought that was the end of the princess, the end of Cassidy as we know her, we find there's a second part to this story, a time for Cassidy to get her revenge. <sighs> princess Cassidy awakes once again to a voice. You are alive. That is good. Take the Sword of Light and go. Somebody else was on her team, an elderly orange-coloured man living in an infected cavernous area. Cassidy had fought once before, but she was overwhelmed by the monster. Now, she had no clue where she was, but she knew she still needed to put up a fight, and this time, this time, she wouldn't let go. As she travelled through the new area, she used the Sword of Light to slowly break down the monster bit by bit. She became stronger as she went, she got more stability, she discovered new powers and she lit the way until she recalled what had happened to her. She was swallowed by this monster, and she blacked out. And if her theory was correct, she was no longer attacking Afton from the outside, she was attacking from the inside. She was a force from within, torturing him with every blow of her sword. She enjoyed it. She was full of rage. She was finally full of power. There was nothing Afton could do. He said he would always come back, but that was about to end. It was Cassidy that came back. Cassidy that found a way to light the darkness and torture the demon. And the old man? That is Old Man Consequences, sitting peacefully by his lake with his orange glow. He gave her the strength to fight once again, and he lives deep, multiple layers deep, in William Afton's brain. In the Fazbear Frights, the man in room 1280 showed that during Ultimate Custom Night, Afton was undergoing a nightmare by some entity, and this showed up on his brain scans. And it's here where I need to address the elephant in the room. The entity responsible for Afton's ultimate custom nightmare was the vengeful spirit, the one you should not have killed. In the books, this is a boy named Andrew. In the games, it's not so clear because of the he him pronouns and the controversial topic of the Fazbear Frights events being canon to the game's timeline. But at the very least, I think Princess Quest is showing that Cassidy is in some way present in ultimate custom night. I think that's factual. So, while I believe that Cassidy is the vengeful spirit, it is debatable, and if you want to hear the Cassidy side, I suggest watching Hyperdroid's video, but if you want to hear the evidence for it being Andrew, go and give Ghost's video a watch. The thing about the man in room 1280 is that Andrew is torturing Afton for all of these years, but he is still able to appear outside of him in a shadow form. This is the idea of soul splitting and characters coexisting in two different places, something we see very clearly in Princess Quest. Cassidy has a mission that she cannot let escape her because of things that are going on in the outside. And just like Golden Freddy, she has a shadowy form because you have to remember that even the brightest lights can cause the darkest shadows. Then she comes across a roadblock. Old Man Consequences sees that Cassidy has done her part, and that she can now rest, have her happiest day. The man that killed her has been tortured, and if Cassidy just let him finally die, then she could rest. She could leave the demon to his demons, and rest her soul, because there's nothing else. But Cassidy doesn't listen. Her quest was not finished, the glitch, the monster was still present. She wouldn't forgive herself if she let Afton go and didn't get her justice. All of that pain he inflicted on other people, all of the agony from all of the incidents all those years ago, he couldn't get away with it. He didn't deserve death. He didn't deserve an end, a way out of this. No, he deserved punishment, an eternal nightmare. Cassidy was as strong as ever at this point. Why stop now? 
Why rest when you will always have that regret in your mind? What was the point of any of this if she was to just randomly stop now? She was determined. She had more strength. She wouldn't rest. Not now. She would fight until the very- Now where was she? It looked familiar, but a little bit off. Where was Afton? Was this heaven? Did she let him go? Did she black out again? She needed answers, but she knew this wasn't right. She left the office room and found herself in a long corridor of black and white tiles, checkerboard patterns with kids' drawings on the walls. Hang on a second. This isn't princess themed. Where's the castle and the old man? It seems that her memories are flooding into the game, even though this is not part of the code. As she walks out into the main area, she realizes this is a virtual reality experience. This is all fake but it still feels as horrible as the castle walls. The game seems to be broken. The glitch has returned, but it seems to have spread. This is not what Cassidy had wanted. Her soul was separated from Afton at some point, and now she was here. But at the end of the day, she made the choice to keep going. If she stopped now, she wouldn't be loyal to her words. Sword in hand, she prepares herself and explores the VR experience. As she proceeds, she starts to see things of the past. It's all familiar to her. Why was this game mimicking some of the history of Freddy's? Why was Chica watching her? Well, I guess she was the first. She saw everything. And then there was this new area, one that felt more Halloween themed with a devilish looking foxy. It was Help Wanted and the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. When Cassidy completes one side, she finds the glitch trap plush. That connects to the ending and Help Wanted where you see this exact thing happening. And when Cassidy completes the corn maze, she finds the Vanny Mask. That connects to the same moment in the Curse of Dreadbear DLC. We know that Cassidy was present somehow here. After all, there's an It's Me Easter Egg right here. And with the Vanny Mask and the Glitch Trap plush, that was everything Cassidy needed to be ready. That was the point in which Vanessa's two personalities were uncontrollable, and this is what Cassidy needed to neutralize the virus. Don't ask me how, I have literally no idea. And voila! After completing Princess Quest 3, you get the savior ending. Cassidy saved Vanessa. She cut the cords connecting the Mimic 1 virus to the Pizzaplex, and it worked. Gregory, Vanessa, and Freddy were free. Cassidy could go on to finally have her happiest day. There was no Princess Quest 4, no more battling monsters in a digital realm, no more switching between bodies to fight back against her killer. There was nothing else. She can now rest her soul. And that would all be fine if it were only canon. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. As much as I love Princess Quest as a method of storytelling, I have to accept that this is not the canon ending of Security Breach. This could have happened, sure, but it looks to me like the Burn Trap ending is the real ending, which will lead us to having to save Gregory, probably in whatever digital world he's trapped into. But that's my take on it all. What do you think? I think that Princess Quest is one of the best minigames we've ever had in the series. It feels similar to the old Atari minigames, but also fresh and with some amazing music. And it tells the tale of someone we've needed more clarification on in this series. I really hope that going forward we're going to continue seeing things like this, which will clarify some lore and show more of how the digital world interacts with the real world. I have a lot of hope, especially after reading the story Drowning in Tales from the Pizzaplex, which spoilers, indirectly references Princess Quest and is highly implied to be about Cassidy haunting a virtual reality game but it also feels slightly reminiscent of the drowning ending of FNAF World. But anyway, that's all I've got time for today. Thank you so much for sticking around, and I hope you'll subscribe for more content like this. I'll see you all later. Goodbye.